Good evening ladies and gentlemen, ZLNX Dev back again with another tutorial video for you guys and today we're going to be looking at .NET Core 6 in particular how to use the Google APIs to create speech um, and play it back through the ULSA devices on Linux. Um, I am specifically creating this application for a little project that I'm uh, working on but I decided to just explore around how to get going in the meanwhile um unfortunately this does require a google development account so or a developer account so you need to go and register on google as a developer and then obviously yeah well we'll dive into the code and i'll show you what else you need to do at google um i'm not going to be hitting the urls for google though um but i mean if you if you literally just go google how to create a credential uh, a google credential uh, json file it will tell you how to do that. It's not too difficult. So the first thing is first, obviously, is there's a few uh, .NET um, core libraries that you're gonna have to install some NuGet packages. Uh, obviously, this is .NET 6. Then um, I installed ulsa.net as a NuGet package. And uh, I added the Google Cloud Text-to-Speech V1 NuGet package, which then I believe added Google APIs auth.oauth2. These are the namespaces that I'm going to be using. And basically, just think of everything um, everything in this first portion of the file as the main method. This is new to .NET 6. You don't have to physically create a main method anymore. And I decided to be a little lazy tonight and do that. But yeah, I mean, if we have a look at the code here, it says, well, I create a cancellation token source. This is just so that if anything should fail when I'm actually trying to get the uh, speech line back from Google, uh, if it takes longer than five seconds, just quit it. Don't do anything. There's obviously something wrong and uh, stuff isn't going to work. So here's what the program looks like. Uh, well, now you see it says YouTube chat console, so I'm probably giving away what I want to do. Um, but there's a Google.json file here. This file contains my um, service account with my IDs and my private key and everything. I don't mind sharing this because you can't see the whole thing. But you need to get your own JSON version of this to get going. Then what you're going to do is you're going to call onto Google Credential the from file and load this JSON file as a credential, which you're going to be using later on, obviously, as you can see. And then each of these methods is basically going to create a small portion of the um, variables that we need when we actually do a synthesized speech call. So a synthesis input, if you have a look at this guy, uh, inspect this. Um, what? Wait, where? Okay, let's just go down. So get, get, get the synthesis input. Basically, this is going to return a new synthesis input. This just contains the text or whatever you want to input into um, the into the uh, Google API so that you can get a voice feedback, right? Okay, cool. There are some other fields here, but I mean, you don't have to worry about that. This is just an SSML document uh, that you can uh, synthesize if you want to. I'm just going to use plain text. Then we have a get voice selection params method, which I am quickly going to set back to South Africa there. So I have just said, hey, Google, give me a voice of a South African male. There is an entire page of available voices and languages. I could set this to Afrikaans as well, which is my native tongue if I want to. And then I can get feedback in that language too, should I really want to. Um, I, would, I wonder whether you can actually detect the language. That would be cool. I think you should be able to using the Google APIs. I'm going to play around with that at some point as well. Then there is a get audio config method, which basically just says, well, bring me back the audio config. This specifies what the um, form format is that you want Google to return. So I've said linear 16, which is basically 16 bit audio, but you can go MP3 if you want to. Um, the thing is with MP3, it doesn't really play nice with the ELSA package, which I downloaded earlier. So, yeah, I just went ahead and decided to, well, just, just keep it to linear 16. It works. Then uh, there's a method called the text to text to get text to speech client builder. This takes the Google credentials that you used earlier or created earlier, rather, and it returns a new text to speech client builder with those credentials. So this is the thing that actually calls out to Google and it's like, hey, Google, 
um, can I can I please create a device that brings me back or the, what that I can use to do speech synthesis? Yeah, sorry for tripping all over my tongue there. And um, obviously, if your credentials are not up to speed, it's going to be like, no, you can't. Um, so, yeah, just just keep a, keep that in mind. Um, also, a small disclaimer. If you do use this method, like I said earlier, it's probably going to cost you money in the long run because Google actually wants you to pay them for the developer account. You don't just get it for free. Anyway. And they, they bill you per API call, I believe, as well. Um, but yeah, I'm considering just subscribing. We'll see. Then what have, what I do is, or what you need to do is then create the speech client calling the boulder.bold async with that cancellation token source token that we created earlier on. Um, this will bring back the speech client from Google. And it's quite simple then from there on. You go, well, give me the output. Uh, as a uh, as a bunch of well, well this is not a, a bunch of bytes it's a synthesized speech response so i need a synthesized speech response call a white speech client synthesized speech async give it your input that you created that's the text you want translated the voice that you created and then obviously the audio config that you created which is going to be linear 16 in this case this will bring back the speech synthesis speech or synthesized speech response object, which contains the byte array that you want to play back. Then what I do here is to play it back is I create a new ALSA device and I just give it the default sound device settings object. This will bring back the currently active ALSA device on your Linux based system. If you're on Windows, you might want to consider, you consider using N audio. Um, but uh, it doesn't work, in audio doesn't work when you're on Linux. So yeah, there might be some detection that you need to do uh, to get this thing going, depending on which platform you're running on. I'll get to that maybe in another video. And then basically it's quite simple. I just have a while loop here that says, well, now just play the audio content as a byte array from the output object, remember, and inject that into a memory stream. So basically just create a new memory stream with the bytes and then tell the device to play that. And then I do a thread dot sleep for a thousand milliseconds. And basically, um, if I can run the application, just give me a second because I wish to do something more. Um, where is that advanced audio properties? I just want to make sure that we actually are going to monitor and output the desktop audio. So remember, this is the text I'm trying to read as a voice from Google. It's going to be in the South African male voice, and it's coming back as a linear 16 wave um, bytes array. So if we compile and run this, takes a while. Well, that's interesting. That is very interesting. I wonder whether it's reset my properties for this guy. Content, full time targets. Why would it set this as? Hmm. Okay, maybe I need to rebuild the solution. And let's just double check that I actually do have the file that I need in here. No, I do not, but I'm just going to grab it and put it there. Can I, in fact, show this in Nemo? And then just copy it over. And then run the application. That should work. This is the text I'm trying to read as a voice from Google.
Very well, cool. This is the text I'm trying to read as a voice from Google. <laughs> so you hear it working there. What I had to do, unfortunately, is copy the uh, google.json file manually into the debug output folder of this .NET Core application there because I renamed the file earlier and it seems to have lost all notion that it needs to actually, you know, copy it as a part of the um, bold. I don't know why that is, but it's fine. It's working. Um, anyways, anyways, guys, yeah, I have been um, ZA Analytics Dev. If you guys have any questions, hit me up in the chat below. Remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. So hard. I'm going to come back, and we're going to go through the YouTube chat API because, yes, that's indeed what I want to do is I want to be able to play back my YouTube chats as audio when I am doing my streaming. It's going to be pretty interesting. The thing is, there's no actual um, application out there that does this now, so far as I know. So, yeah, stick around. We're going to build it together, and it's going to be fun. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Have a good one. Stay safe. Until next time, ZA Linux Dev, over and out.